In the world of rap music, where artists often clash and compete, it was a big welcome when J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, two well-known rappers, battled it out to see who the real GOAT is in the rap game. For a long time, hip-hop fans have eagerly awaited for a rap battle. It created new excitement to a genre that had recently struggled to dominate the charts. Beef started to broil between the industry's purported big three, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, and J. Cole. Lamar took direct aim at Drake and Cole on a diss track. J. Cole responded with his own. But Cole is well known for being a nice guy and not getting into fights with other rappers. So, when he dissed Kendrick, it caught everyone off guard. However, this wasn't the issue as diss tracks are common in rap music. But what got fans confused is when J. Cole later apologized by saying he was sorry for making a diss track. This didn't sit well with his fans, and they felt betrayed. But was this the right move for his rap legacy? That's why in this video, we dig deeper into what happened between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, why diss songs are so important in hip-hop, and how J. Cole's apology might have ruined his rap legacy. We'll also explore further what it means for rappers to stay true to themselves when it comes to being authentic in hip-hop music. So, what happened between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar? The War of Words started last year on the song First Person Shooter, where Cole suggested that him, Drake, and Lamar were the current big three names in hip-hop. We the big three like we started a league, but right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali, Cole rapped. But Kendrick Lamar, who was missing in action for quite some time, felt the line was highly inaccurate, which prompted the response like that on Future's We Don't Trust You album. In a fiery verse on the song, he declared there was no big three, it's just big me. He went on to call Drake and Cole's verses, a light pack. When Kendrick put out his Like That verse, the song went number one and Kendrick had the world's attention. There were talks of a rap civil war, and people were getting excited to see how Drake and Cole would respond. J. Cole then felt pressured to respond, and released 7-Minute Drill. He hit back by saying Lamar had fallen off like The Simpsons, and called his latest album tragic. However, J. Cole took a U-turn in his spat with Kendrick Lamar, apologizing to his former collaborator just days after calling him out. During a performance at his Dreamville Festival in North Carolina, J. Cole apologized for his lame and goofy response, adding that he felt terrible after releasing the diss track. However, this came at a time where J. Cole, now in his prime, had been consistently claiming to be the best over and over again in his lyrics. This meant that the moment Kendrick dropped the It's Just Big Me line, his hand was forced. It was time to stand on the claims he'd been making all these years, and he knew his fans were eagerly awaiting for a response. So when it was time to come back and diss Kendrick, he dropped a warning shot with the release of 7-Minute Drill. Most of the bars in it, while lyrically impressive, did not match the energy of a true diss song. The diss song in itself wasn't the problem, but to backtrack and apologize was where hip-hop fans didn't feel satisfied. Here's a rapper who claims to be one of the big three, but when it comes to proving it, he fails miserably to stand his ground. Now his credibility and reputation is on the line as to whether he is an authentic rap artist. But before we unravel how J. Cole's career will be impacted, we have to at least understand why diss tracks are important in hip-hop music. Diss tracks have a long-standing tradition in rap music, dating back to the genre's early days. It extends back to the days of DJs scratching breaks and dancers spinning on their heads. They squared off at legendary block parties. MCs exchanged fiery bars and battle raps on stage. Those traditions laid the cornerstone for a genre that continues to evolve, propelling hip-hop into a global sensation. Yes, of course, rap is an art form and art is inherently subjective. But it's also a competition of wit and will, a proving ground to see where you measure up. The competition element is a foundational tenet of hip-hop, so when people heard Kendrick and J. Cole, people were excited, like we're going to see two of the biggest stars go at it on the biggest stage. So when Cole got on the Dreamville Festival stage and apologized, it threw a lot of people off, hence the debate that is happening within the hip-hop community. Some of the most iconic moments in hip-hop history involve legendary battles between artists, which have helped shape the culture and narrative of rap. Some good and memorable rap beefs include the Tupac Shakur vs. Biggie, East Coast vs. West Coast. This beef is perhaps the most infamous in hip-hop history. Tupac, representing the West Coast, and Biggie, from the East Coast, were once close friends but became bitter rivals. The feud escalated with diss tracks like Tupac's Hit Him Up and Biggie's Who Shot Ya. The tragic deaths of both rappers, Tupac in 1996 and Biggie in 1997, added a somber dimension to this feud, with speculations of their murders being linked to the rivalry. Jay-Z vs. Nas These two New York MCs had a beef for the ages. Jay was on top of the game, and Nas was coming off of one of his worst albums. While someone had to lose in this battle, it cemented both his rap legends. Jay-Z started the War of Rhymes with TakeOver, 
and Nas ended it with Ether. The feud showcased lyrical prowess and personal jabs between the two artists. They ended their longtime battle in 2005 when Jay invited surprise guest Nas on stage during his I Declare War concert. The truce became official months later when Nas signed to Def Jam in 2006 during Jay's presidency. And last but not least the Drake vs. Meek Mill. In 2015, Meek Mill accused Drake of using a ghostwriter, igniting a highly publicized feud. Drake responded with two diss tracks, Charged Up and Back to Back, the latter of which became a massive hit. Meek Mill retaliated with Wanna Know, but it was poorly received by fans and critics. The feud showcased the power of social media and memes, with Back to Back spawning countless internet jokes and memes aimed at Meek Mill. In the world of rap, it's super important to be able to defend yourself when someone comes at you with insults or criticism. If you can come back with a strong diss track of your own, it shows that you're tough and real, which can make people respect you more. Moreover, when two rappers start dissing each other with tracks, it gets fans really excited. People argue over who had the better verses, and which rapper totally owned the other. All this buzz makes more people listen to the music, watch the videos, and talk about the rappers online. Making a diss track isn't just about saying mean things to someone else. It's a chance for the rapper to be creative and express themselves. They can use cool wordplay, clever comparisons, and really smart lines to show off their skills. So, diss tracks aren't just about starting drama. They're a big part of what makes rap so cool and exciting. They're like verbal battles where the best rapper wins, and everyone gets to see just how talented they are. Battle rap is another beast of its own, a subculture within hip-hop. The art of 2MC sparring for a crowd is as pure as it is essential, drawing from the classic early days when artists like the Cold Crush Brothers battled the fantastic freaks on bootleg tapes that would circulate around New York City in the late 1970s. The essence of, I'm better than you, and I can prove it is hip-hop's great equalizer. It's the reason why up to this day that the hip-hop community is largely divided on why Eminem is considered one of the greatest rappers of all time. Kendrick himself paid his respects and even mentioned Eminem as one of the greatest in his control verse alongside Jay-Z, Nas, and Andre 3000. In the 1990s, Eminem was getting ready to become a dad for the first time. He was also making his first album called Infinite, which came out in 1996 on a small record label. The album talked a lot about how hard it was going to be to be a dad, which was important to Eminem but not really interesting to his fans. So, the album didn't do well. Then, just before his daughter turned one, he lost his job. This made him really mad, and it showed in his songs, which started to resonate with his fans. That's when he came up with a new idea. He created a new persona called Slim Shady. With Slim Shady, he could say and do all the crazy things he was going through in his songs. He sold everything he had, made a demo called the Slim Shady EP, and started performing at rap battles all over the country. These battles are a big part of Eminem's story, and they were highlighted in the movie 8 Mile in 2002. In the movie, Eminem's character goes up against other rappers at his local hangout. But in real life, it was much harder. The crowds were tough, and they usually liked the local rappers more than Eminem. Eminem lost, and the crown was eventually handed to his battle rap opponent Juice, who gallantly paid tribute to Eminem's skills and tenacity while accepting the winner's prize. This credibility gave Eminem a much more valuable victory when his demo tape found its way into the hands of Dr. Dre and Interscope Records. Dre immediately recognized the talent on display and could feel the energy in the lyrics. Dre began producing Eminem songs. At the start of 1999, the duo unleashed the Slim Shady LP on an unsuspecting world, and within months Eminem had become one of the most recognizable and successful recording artists on earth. So, how does apologizing for making a diss track ruin J. Cole's legacy? Well, for many fans, hip-hop is much more than being a Mr. Nice Guy when faced with a choice in battle. It's about proving yourself when you hit an obstacle. It becomes a source of motivation, about believing in yourself and standing on ten toes when times are tough. This is true in today's society especially for men, who represent the majority of J. Cole's audience. Men today are weaker than ever, not just physically but emotionally and mentally too. There is no sense of confidence among young men, no self-esteem whatsoever, and they turn to the internet for refuge. But when you're a J. Cole fan and looking for his words of wisdom in his music to help and motivate you in the battles of life, it becomes a bit discouraging when you hear he had to apologize for making a diss song, to say the least. A diss song which even failed to deliver and many considered it soft. If it was a brutal diss track, that would have had fans gasping like, oh my god, he went too far with that one, then they would have been more forgiving if he called a truce or apologized. It's understandable that J. Cole had a change of heart and he wanted to apologize for dissing Kendrick because his heart really wasn't in it. He didn't want to have a lyrical battle with somebody he called a friend. 
But that's where the confusion lies in this whole argument. Because a lot of hip-hop fans thought they were going to see a battle between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, two lyrical MCs, not necessarily a personal beef, because a beef and a battle are two different things. One J. Cole fan on Reddit said, If J. Cole had the understanding that, I don't intend to get into diss tracks because it is not my thing then in the very first place he shouldn't have talked about being the best in all his songs. He set himself up, and now when the beast knocked on his door, and he usually does, J. Cole folded and along the way let his fans down. Once again, a personal beef is different from a rap battle. We all know J. Cole has always been about keeping the peace. Even in the past, when we've seen rappers try to diss J. Cole, he's never taken a toxic approach to it. He always makes sure there's meaningful substance in his music, and while he sends a few jabs back and forth, as a whole, they aren't really diss songs. But knowing that hip-hop is a competitive sport, J. Cole should have never dropped songs which were basically about how if someone says his name, he'd end their career. Other fans say he could have talked to Kendrick directly and tried to end things privately, but he came out with a lot of noise and got what was coming to him. Hip-hop fans beg Drake not to apologize and appear as weak as J. Cole. Drake is no stranger to rap feuds, having previously mixed it up with big names like Ye, Meek Mill, and Pusha T. In response to Kendrick Lamar, he released a track called Push-Ups. On the track, Drake asked how Lamar was stepping with a size 7 men's on and called Lamar a pipsqueak. Whether or not this was a great response is up for debate amongst fans, as it is intended. For J. Cole, fans will always wonder if he is being genuine in his lyrics. Fans might question whether he truly believes in what he is saying in his songs. Even if he speaks lots of wisdom in his lyrics, fans will feel less inspired listening to them. It's like the punch in his music became softer and fans can't feel the same energy in his words as before. And where hip-hop is all about bars, it leads to less excitement or interest in J. Cole's music. Many of his fans will feel demoralized even when these debates come up in their day-to-day -day conversations of who is the greatest rapper of all time. Ultimately, the question with no same answer still remains. Who is the GOAT in the rap music industry?